Hey, what's up, YouTube? Bronix with yet another tutorial, and this is a retouching challenge by Sota Photography, and it is the second challenge I'm participating in uh, of his series of uh, retouching challenges. So, this is the image we are going to be dealing with, and as you can see right now, this is a raw file, and I'm in my Capture One interface. If at all I zoom out, you can see the image we are going to be dealing with and initially this is a challenge i should say because i love uh challenges that are worth it and yeah this image is really worth of a challenge so usually for my uh, adjustments i prefer to come so if at all you don't have your adjustments on the right hand side simply come to window workspace then come to migration and you have your interface on the right hand side so i prefer to do that for all my uh, processes for capture one so basically what i'm going to be doing i'm going to start by adding some kind of levels into the image so i'm going to add the blacks then i'm going to push in the whites like that so when i'm done doing so i'm basically going to come up to the basic adjustments and pull down my highlights like that and also come to my whites and pull them down like this then add a little bit of blacks, then I'm going to knock up my shadows to around 15. But as you can notice, the image has so many reds or magentas, so just want to fix that uh, in a bit. So let's come, I'm going to add some contrast to this image to add more detail. Then since we have this reddish color, I'm going to come right to the ICC profile and I'm going to select a pro standard So What you're going to notice is that uh, Canon cameras usually have um, Magentas or so many reds in them. So you can see that we still have Magentas in this image and we're going to be fixing that in a bit So I'm going to come to the layer option and I'm going to right click and I'm going to come to new field adjustment layer so what I'm going to do for this very step is I want to select and even out uh, the skin color so that we can have a uniform color in the overall image. So I'm going to come all the way down to my color editor option and, and I'm going to come to my skin tone. Then I'm going to move all the way down and get my color picker tool and zoom in and I'm going to just sample the area I would love the overall skin to look like. So I'm zooming in by holding down control, yeah, control plus, and I'm going to simply look for the area that I feel like uh, my overall skin should look like. So I think uh, I would be fine with this area. Or rather, let me select such. Oh, let me come back and sample from here and I think right here is okay for me So when you sample you're going to notice the color range of your selection So I'm going to come to the uniformity slider. I'm going to zoom out and I'm, I'm going to start moving the uniformity slider until I feel like uh, the overall image is having a uniform a uh, skin color and I'm also going to come the saturation and also knock up the saturation so you can see that uh, we have such a color so I could even come and sample even more so you can see right now we have a uniform color but you can notice that we still have reds or magentas in this image so basically I'm going to come to the hue option you can see when I go up it is going to add some kind of greens and that the opposite of a magenta is green so if at all I move towards the left hand side you can you can see that the image is having magentas so I'm going to move this towards uh, the green side to eliminate the magentas in the image like that so you can see right now we are having a relatively balanced image so I'm not going to mind about uh, the clothing because I just prefer it looking like that and I'm going to increase on the saturation and also increase on the amount of hues to eliminate the magentas in this very image. So I think uh, this is fine. 
So I've taken a lot of time right here. So let me just go into Photoshop and do skin retouching. I'm going to come to image and I'm going to come to edit with. Then Photoshop 2020, that's the version. And I prefer using a 16-bit image and a TIFF. So I'm going to come to edit variants and I'm going to take the image into Photoshop for further skin retouching. So under Photoshop, we're going to be learning an in-depth skin retouching tutorial so that you guys can follow along and understand as usual. So I think I've done so many tutorials about skin retouching and we are going to get the image imported into photoshop so as usual i would prefer to first of all crop the image in a ratio of uh, 45 because i would love to post this insta uh, image on instagram yeah to support a brother so i'm just going to crop in the image like this so after doing my cropping i'm just going to hit enter and here we are right now so first of all, five things first. I would love to first of all clean up this image. I'm going to create a duplicate of the background by hitting Ctrl Command J. I'm going to get my spot healing brush tool. You can either sample all layers or just leave this unclicked because this is a new field layer. And I'm going to zoom in and start cleaning up uh, this image. So remember, always and always take your time while removing those skin imperfections because blemish removal uh, contributes uh, a great deal to your overall skin retouching process so always make sure you uh, take your time while removing those prominent blemishes and even after skin retouching you will notice that uh, there are some blemishes we may forget or leave out in this first step so after skin retouching always come back and ensure that uh, you are going to uh, remove those remaining blemishes so and for those that would love uh, to learn more about retouching and get this image right away just go to a uh, suta photography and the link is going to be in the description of uh, this very video so that you guys can get your hands on this raw image and you can uh, start learning or retouching it and you're going to be following along with this very tutorial so make it a point to uh go to his dm and you'll be able to get the link to this uh, raw file so that you can get your hands on and start retouching so basically i'm trying to uh, clean up or remove blemishes from uh, this very image so i'm going to zoom in and uh, clean up uh, these areas like this by basically clicking over those tiny imperfections or blemishes so when i'm i feel like i'm done with the face always make it a point also come down and clean up the rest of the body because skin retouching entails uh, retouching the overall image and not only the face so you have to take that into consideration every time you're retouching or cleaning up uh, the blemishes in a given image so i think we are done cleaning up most of the areas so this is more of a starting point so let's start uh, retouching this image i'm simply going to create a new layer so i'm going to name this uh, low frequency and i'm going to name this high frequency like that so we are going to turn this off and select the low frequency layer. And since uh, we have textures in this image, we are going to come to filter, blur, and come to Gaussian blur. So for this radius, we are simply going to look for the area that has uh, more skin textures in the image by simply zooming out and looking for that area. And usually the nose area always has uh, more textures than the rest of the skin. So we're just going to move this slider until we have completely uh, lost out on the uh, skin details in the image so i think at around nine we have completely lost out on the details if at all i zoom and pan around you can see we have lost out on the details and the image is now turning to look a little bit blurry so don't mind select the high frequency layer and activate 
it and come to image and come to apply image so when you come to apply image since this is a 16-bit image and for those that would love to know the details of uh, the settings right here i'm going to put a link for you guys above here so that you can understand the details why we use uh, add and subtract in the blending depending on the uh, bit ratio of the images i'm going to come and select the low frequency layer then for the blending i'm going to select add and opacity 100 scale is to offset zero and i'm going to select invert and you're going to have the textures on this gray kind of layer so come the blending mode and change it from uh, normal to linear light and you'll get back the image the way it was looking initially before put these two in a group by hitting ctrl or command g and we're going to open this group select the high frequency layer and now come and create a black and white adjustment layer and simply darken it the reason for this is because we want to see the uneven skin tones in the images so come and select the low frequency layer and come to get under the brushes and get your mixer brush tool make sure it is a clean brush wetness uh sorry clean brush make sure you select the second option because want the brush to clean itself when you are trying to blend or even out the skin tones wetness is nine percent load 75 mix 90 and flow 100 make sure sample areas is not are checked or marked because we only want to work on the low frequency layer and they're now going to zoom in slightly until we have the face uh, emphasized because I would just want to do a skin retouching anyway so it's just going to start evening out the skin tones and when you're evening out make sure you even out the mid tones alone the highlights alone and the shadow so I have some kind of shadow right here and I'm just going to even it, even it out like that and increase on the size of your mixer brush by using the brackets right or near the p like p for pen uh, yeah the p button or the p key on the keyboard so just come and harmonize or blend the skin tones right on the model's head so how i'm doing this i'm blending the mid tones alone uh, the highlights alone and the shadows alone so i'm going to reduce on the size I'm just going to come and blend right there. So we are going to be checking on our progress for this image as we retouch it. So let's turn this off. And you see what I've just done using the mixer brush tool for the forehead. You can see the before, after, before, after. I hope you guys are really loving what I'm doing to this very image. And I love the results so far. So you can as well work without the help of the black and white layer. But I always advise you guys to use the black and white adjustment layer when you're trying to even out or blend the skin tones unless you come to this area which has colors or different colors but for your skin i would prefer you put it back on and select your low frequency layer and reduce on the size depending on a given part of the image you're trying to blend or even out uh, the skin tones at so just going to come and they're going to harmonize or even out the skin tones like that so i'm blending the shadows right here on the nose area alone then coming to the highlight and i'm also going to blend it alone i'm just going to increase on the size and i have mid tones right here and i'm just going to even them out like that alone then come to these mid tones on this cheek area and i'm just going to harmonize and blend them too so keep on checking on your progress like i usually say so the before after before after we still have uh, the original details so you shouldn't mind if at all we are losing out on these highlights because we're going to be able to get them back so come back and now it is time to blend these tones right here so the way i'm blending i'm making sure or emphasizing that i'm remaining within or blending the way light is falling on that particular area so i don't want to uh, distort the original shape of the model's face that's why i'm basically trying to even out the tones uh, by following the way light is falling on a particular area so you can see the before after before after and now i'm going to uh, zoom in slightly because i want to blend the tones right here so don't mind if at all we are not doing a perfect job because we are going to be perfecting that 
uh, shortly so come right here and just even out this, the tones and you can come in between the eyebrows and also even them out like that so I'm going to increase on the size of the mixer brush tool and just come and blend the tones right here so we have some kind of shadows you're just going to basically blend uh, these shadows and now come to the chin area and start uh, blending the tones right on the chin area so you have shadows right here come and blend them like that increase on the size and you're going to come and blend or even out uh, the tones right this side so basically you have to be patient as a retoucher don't uh, get images and you're on pressure to deliver always make sure you take your time and you do the images according to your own pace and timing and if at all you are not in the right mode of uh, retouching always make sure that you don't retouch because you're not going to be able to get uh, the best results when you do retouch when you're not in the right uh, mindset so always make sure that you are you are actually mentally ready for skin retouching of all the images so we're going to zoom out and turn off the black and white and see what we have done so far to this image you can see the before after before after so for these areas we have not blended just come you can as well work without the black and white to see where we have uh, uneven skin tones and just come and blend them even more to have the best out of your retouched images so let's just come and blend these tones like that i hope you're seeing what uh, we are achieving so far so let me zoom out so that you guys can see the results for this image you can see the before after before after we have just blended and harmonized the tones so like I said, uh, you can as well work without the help of the help layer or our black and white layer. So just leave it at that. Don't overdo it. And now when you feel like you're done blending the face, come to the chest area and just uh, double click right here and increase on the reds like that to have more vivid colors when you're going to blend these other areas. So get a smaller brush and just come to the low frequency layer and start or continue evening out on the skin tones in the chest area like that. And when you do so, you're going to notice that uh, you're having a natural skin texture. Like if at all you are following along this virtual while retouching this very image, you're going to notice that uh, the results are going to always uh, be the same. So always uh, take your time while you are blending or evening out uh, the skin tones. And don't, like I've said before, don't rush. Because when you do rush, uh, you're, going, you're not going to get the best uh, results from your retouching process. And you'll have taken a lot of time, always said a lot of time, trying to achieve the best out of your retouching. So... You'd rather not uh, rush through the retouching uh, technique. So you can see frequency suppression is the most misused skin retouching technique. But when you understand it, you'll uh, always get the best out of your images when you do the retouching. So turn it off and you see what you have done on the chest area. You can see the before, after, before, after. I was just using uh, the mixer brush tool. So I'm going to come to the hands or the arms and you're going to turn this on and continue uh, blending or evening out the skin tones. And for those that have always watched uh, the tutorials right here on this channel, I always prefer not uh, to forward anything because I want you guys to understand each and every step. And I don't want to uh, be like I'm doing Oh, I'm showing magic to you guys when I do forward anything. So come to the hands and so for these lower areas, you always have to make sure that you use the mixer brush tool uh, because uh, when you tend to use the lasso tool method, 
on these areas it tends to give you unnatural results and the image is going to turn out to look plastic at the end of your retouching so always make sure you only use the mixer brush tool on these lower parts of the body and you can turn this back off and see the before after before after let me zoom in and just blend this area right here or even out the skin tones right on these areas so i hope you guys are loving and enjoying our transformation for this very image so i'm going to harmonize this and come and do some little bit more of the work on the nose area without the help of my black and white layer so i think we are done using the mixer brush tool you can see the before after before after so we are going to delete the black and white layer by hitting the delete key after selecting it and come the low frequency layer and come the lasso tool so this is why we have to perfect our retouching so come and select on the skin area like I always say, always make sure that your selection is going to be only on the skin area and not on the eyebrows or the edges or the hair. So come to filter and come to blur and come to gush and blur. So here we're just going to be perfecting what we have done. So move this until you are feeling like you're getting at the best skin out of your image. You can see right now, we already have the textures evident or vivid in this image so come and hit ok and now we are going to uh, apply the effect onto the rest of uh, this very image so come right here to the eye right click and click on gush and blur so we are basically trying to uh, perfect the areas we may have missed out when we are using the mixer brush tool to even out or blend the skin tones in this particular image so come and the way i'm drawing these shapes is the way light is falling onto a particular area of the model's face so you shouldn't make a solid uh selection because that solid selection is basically going to uh, be making your image to look really bad and flat so i'm sorry if i told you guys can hear any noise in uh, my background so come right click and click on gush and blur to have the best so come to the upper lip area and right click and click on gush and blur so you're going to basically come to the other side of the lip and right click click on gush and blur and when you feel like the effect is too much i forgot to say you can simply click shift ctrl f or shift command f and you can reduce on the effect in that particular area so for this case i'm going to leave everything at 100 uh, percent so come right to this side of the nose and i simply right click and click on gush and blur and you can now come to uh, this other side of the nose area and right, right click rather click on gush and blur you know i love retouching like i'm really a passionate retoucher that's why every time i feel like i want to drop a tutorial i always retouch and i drop the tutorial for you guys to learn more about retouching so you can see where we are right now so you can see where we started before after before after so i'd love to uh, also work on this cloth so i'm going to come to my mixer brush tool and select the low frequency layer and just increase on the weightness rather to around 22 and i'm just going to blend or smoothen uh, this top i should say of the model so i'm basically evening out the tones you can use frequency separation and the mixer brush tool for any you can even iron i should say you can even iron clothes using frequency separation that is how a powerful of a technique it is in photography and fashion i should say but told you always take uh, fabric clothes so you can have just uh, ironed out uh, the wrinkles out of uh, this clothing you can see where we started and here we are before after 
I'm going to come back to my spot healing brush tool and select the high frequency layer. And what I would love to do, I want to uh, eliminate these remaining uh, blemishes from this very image so that uh, you guys can see uh, what we have been able to achieve. And you know, I'm more of a perfectionist, so I don't prefer to leave any blemishes uh, in the images I retouch because you guys are always ready you all you're always uh, somewhere ready to zoom in the images are uh, trying to look for imperfection areas so I always uh, try my best to uh, eliminate every tiny thing you guys can uh, base on to uh, judge uh, my skin retouching so I think we are done removing most of those skin imperfections or the blemishes that may have remained in this very image when we are removing them in the first place. So I think that is fine. So right now what I would love to do, I would love to clean up this and just reduce on the amount of those cracked areas on the lips. So what I'm basically going to do, let me first try to get my clone stamp tool and I'm going to, let me first of all sample current and below and see if at all I'll be able to fix this. I'm just going to hold down the alternate key to sample and uh, this is not working, control command Z. So I, I think I'm done doing the retouching. So I'm going to be fixing that later on in this tutorial. I'm going to now do the dodging and burning. And I would love to color grade this using the color range option. It is really powerful. And I love using it for my dodging and burning. So I'm going to come to the curves adjustment layer. I'm going to come to select. And I'm going to come to color range. So usually I want to enhance the highlights first in the image. So for this case... I think I'm going to go with this selection of the forehead. So always make sure your quick selection is on and the quick mask is also on. And now you can see I have the highlights selected in the image. So you can play around with the fuzziness. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to uh, make a midpoint. Remember I want first of all dodge. So when you're dodging you enhance the highlights and when you're burning you enhance uh, the shadows. So you can see the before, after, before, after. I've brought back the highlights I'd lost out during this skin retouching using frequency separation. I'm going to do the same for the burn. I'm going to come back to my curves and I'm going to come to select color range. And I'm going to select uh, the shadows this time around. So I think that is a pretty nice selection. Hit OK and I'm going to... Make a midpoint. Remember, I want to darken the shadows. So I'm just going to move this uh, down like that. So I'm going to put these two in a group by hitting uh, Command G after selecting both. So I'm going to name that group uh, D and B for dodge and burn. So you can see the before and after for our dodging and burning. And if at all you feel it is too much like I do, I'm just going to reduce on the opacity of our dodging and burning. So you can see the before after. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer because I want first of all fix the lip area. I'm going to hit shift alternate command E on the keyboard, shift alternate control E for PC or Windows to create a stamp visible layer and I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control command J. I'm going to get my clone stamp tool and I'm going to sample the current layer only. And I'm going to zoom into the lips like that because I want to fix the lip area. I'm going to now hold down the alternate key on the keyboard to sample close to this area. And I'm just going to try to uh, fix uh, the lip area or the lips. I think that has done a bad job right there. Alternate and I'm going to sample and just paint. So I'm basically holding down the alternate like this and I'm just going to move this like that until I feel like I am doing a nice job trying to fix uh, the missing 
lipstick so I'm going to hold down the alternate again because I want to sample from right here and I'm basically going to uh, move it towards the right hand side to uh, fix that area then I'm going to get my healing brush tool all spot healing and I'm going to reduce on the amount of textures on the lip area like this so I think I am doing a pretty nice job I hope uh, I think I, I should get a rating from you guys in the comment section if at all I have really done uh, a good job uh, to this image so I, I don't know if I have done any justice you can as well criticize me no worries so you can see I've now fixed the lip area. So I'm going to name this layer maybe lips. Then I'm going to create another stamp, another layer by hitting Control Command G and I'm going to name this uh, camera. Okay, let me name this color grade. So we are going to take this image into camera row filter. So I'm going to come to filter and come to the camera row filter and you are going to color grade this beautiful image. So you're going to simply come to the calibration option and you're going to play around with the red primary. So I'm just basically going to reduce on the saturation of the reds and also reduce on the saturation of uh, the greens so around negative 10. And I, let me see what uh, my saturation of the blues is going to give me. So I'm also going to leave it at 10. Then I feel like uh, the image is now looking really okay but it is now looking uh, less saturated so I'm going to move the reds towards the orange side like that around three then I'm going to come to my HSL panel and I'm going to come to the luminance of the oranges and I'm going to knock it down like that to around negative six yeah I'm going to come to the hues of the oranges and here is where and the magic is basically going to take place. So I'm going to move this to around. Let me go with around negative. Let me go with 8 and reduce on the saturation of the oranges like that. So you can see where we are right now. So we are now going to do the eye whitening for this very model. So I'm going to click on the eye area and come and get to our adjustment brush tool. So this is the adjustment brush tool and come and set it up. So I'm going to move the temperatures to around negative 28 and the tint to around 66. I want the eyes to pop. I'm going to move the highlights to 5 and also move my whites to around 4. And since we have color in the white area of the eye, reduce the saturation but not all the way down to around 68. So I'm going to start painting over only uh, the white area of the eye like that i know this has really been a, a challenge to me and i love challenges because they help me uh, see my retouching potential so you always have to engage in any challenge you come across because it is going to be determining uh, how much of a retoucher or how you have grown as a retoucher so always make sure you engage in these challenges so you can see where we are right now i'm now going to come all the way up and i'm going to add some contrast to this image around so i'm going to come the basic adjustment i'm going to add some contrast uh, to this image like that and when i'm done doing so i'm going to now open the image back into photoshop and do some little bit more of the color grading. You can see this was the image before Camaro and this is where we are before, after. So we're going to come to the selective color and now we are going to come first of all to the blacks and just increase on the blacks in this image to around five and come to the yellows and just knock it down to around because I really prefer to push my yellows all the way down to around 10 because it adds that kind of cinematic uh, feel to the images I retouch but I feel like this is way overdone I'm just going to leave it at that then I'm going to come to the reds and I'm going to 
I'll reduce on the amount of magentas in the reds like that to around negative two. I think uh, so far so good. I'm going to come to the uh, photo filter and I'm just going to cool down the image slightly. So I'm going to move this all the way down to around, I think to around two. So here we are right now and I think uh, we are done retouching this very image. I know it has been a long way coming. So let's see a before and after. I'm going to hold down the alternate key. You can see the image before, after, before, after. You can see what I have been able to achieve while retouching uh, this very image. So we have retouched and color graded this uh, very image in just Photoshop. So you can see if at all I do an overview for you guys. I'm going to uh, do an overview so that you guys can see what we were able to do for this very image. So this was the original image from Capture One. Then we did the skin retouching using a mixer brush tool and the lasso tool method. Then we also came and did the dodging and burning to add shape or dimension to the image. Then we created the stamp visible layer and uh, we fixed uh, the lips or the lip area of the model. You can see the before and after. Then we came and did color grading in uh, camera row. You can see the before and after. Then after doing that color grading, uh, we came and also did some furthermore color grading in uh, selective color. You can see before, after, before, after. So overall, uh, this is where we started with this image and after, before, after. And if at all you love this tutorial, don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to subscribe this channel. If at all you're watching from this channel for the very first time, Ronix from Ronix Photography. And if at all you want to get your hands to this image, don't forget to inbox Suta, Suta Photography. The link is going to be in the description of this video for the raw file. And I'll see you in yet another tutorial on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating.